Which you guys, if you're looking for an affordable mini PC, the Dell Optiplex 3050 Micro PC is a pretty decent offering. Now, you can pick these up around about 80 to 150 pounds. They all vary in different specs and they vary in different quality, i.e. this one is in mint condition because it's pretty much new when I got it. So we're going to be giving it some upgrades to give it better performance. And uh, we can use this for many different things, as I'll explain a little bit later on in a video. So depending on what version you've got of the Dell 3050, some of the features might be missing, like the Wi-Fi card here. Sometimes this is not already installed and you would have to add this in. And you've got this little VGA here. This is an added bonus. They added this in already. But these do come as add-ons and additional add-ons, which you can purchase an add-on here. There is a Kensington lock here. I thought that was a Type-C port here where we could upgrade that to Type-C here, but unfortunately that is not the case. Um, but yeah, we're going to undo this little screw here and get inside and take a look at some of the upgrades we can give this. Now, I'll be talking about what you can actually use these for and what your options are when you get one of these uh, mini devices here but that will be a little bit later on in the video. So let's take the cover off here. And you can see it's a very small micro PC and it's very well designed by Dell and it's been put together pretty well. Now we're going to be using this NVMe drive here. This is a Western Digital Blue. It's a Gen 3 and that's what these take. And it's not the fastest Gen 3 out there, but it will do for what I've got here. And I've got an antenna here. I've already got a Wi-Fi card in here, but I'll explain some of that a little bit later on. And I've got some memory as well. So we just get access to the actual drive. Now, if your drive has got a mechanical drive in here, these are great for storage. So if you've got one terabyte uh, mechanical drive in here, you could leave that in there and store all your files and whatever you want to on here. This does have a cheap 128 gigabyte SSD, which I will change out. It should have a 512 uh, gigabyte SSD in here, but the person swapped it out and ripped me off a little bit. There's a slot here for your NVMe here. It does have to screw in here. If it doesn't have to screw, you will need to get that little mounting uh, screw there. There is also a Wi-Fi card in here, and this can be added at a later date. Some of these don't come with Wi-Fi cards, and you will need to add one in. Uh, but there is plenty of options, and I'll show you some of the options a little bit later on in the video. But again, you can look for a fast um, upgrade for this one here. The antennas will go along the side here. And then there's a little punch out, which you will need to punch out. They don't always come with these Wi-Fi cards. So make sure if you need Wi-Fi, make sure it's already added in because it's just an added extra cost that you're going to have to go out and buy a Wi-Fi card with the cables and the actual antenna. Again, I'll show you this a little bit later on. We're going to remove this cover here and this will expose the CPU, as you can see under that big heatsink here. And here is the RAM. I picked this up pretty cheap, identical RAM on eBay for around about 16 pounds for eight gigabytes. So I'll have 16 gigabytes in total. This can accept up to 32 gigabytes of sodium DDR4 2133 or 2400 megahertz RAM. Either one of those, it will be perfectly fine. So manage to get identical pair. You don't really need to, but I like to try to keep it a match pair here. But again, 32 gigabytes is good enough for this little micro PC. So that is the RAM upgraded. Now. I could have gone up to 32 here, but I have no real need to do 32 as of yet. So 16 gigs is going to be good enough for what I need it for. Now I've reviewed quite a lot of mini PCs on my channel and some of these are pretty expensive. Uh, these can be picked up pretty cheap and there's different models out there. So choose which one suits your needs. On this 3050, it's Intel HD Graphics 630. And on the CPU, we have an i5 7500T. And it might be possible to even upgrade to an i7 7700T, uh, but you might not see as much of a difference as you think. Uh, there is four cores and eight threads on the i7 version, whereas there's four cores and four threads on the i5 version. So check up uh, the specs and the differences in performance before you go and splash the cash on a new CPU. So let's go ahead and uh, get this NVMe drive in here. This is going to add a lot more performance to the system especially if you're running on just normally a standard mechanical drive instead of a, an SSD. So we're going to be using the Western Digital uh, SN570. And the sequential reads for this is 3,500 MBS. And we also we have sequential writes for 2,300 MBS. 
So it is going to be a quite a difference from a mechanical drive if there was a mechanical drive in here. But this did have uh, the integral 120 gig SSD, which was a cheaper SSD, which on average around about 500 uh, reads and writes on those or give or take. So, yeah, it's not the best, but this will be a lot better. And I'll put a bigger drive in here for storage. So we'll just mount this down. Now, there wasn't the blue uh, standoff here. It did only have the screw in here. So I'm assuming that is the way they mount these. And uh, I will check. I think there was the little uh, screwless type as well you can get on some models. Uh, but this one did have a screw in here. So now we've got everything we need here. Now, again, with this one, make sure there is no heat sink on the actual NVMe drive. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to put the hard drive cage back in. It's going to be too high. So just make sure you do that. And also, there is room for one little upgrade there. I can see there is a little tiny connector here, which means you can add something else in here. So there is plenty of little headers on here. You can see this little uh, one here that someone's added in already, which is for VGA, which will give you extra uh, monitors. So if you wanted to put uh, free monitors on here with those DP and also HDMI and VGA, you could add three monitors on here, no problem at all on their own connectors, which is probably what they were doing here. So yeah, a pretty decent little setup here. You can see there's a little hole here. I really thought that was for a type C, but it's for a Kensington lock. So that's what that's for there. A um, bit disappointed that you can't have type C in here, but there is ways around it. And again, there is no uh, header on the board for a type C. So there's no type C available on this version of Dell Optiplex micros. I think the later versions come with a type C connector on them and some HPs uh, do. They do exactly the same thing. So just choose which one suits you. Now, if you're going to be putting a Wi-Fi card in here, I've already mentioned this before, but just make sure that it comes with that. If it doesn't, then you can always upgrade those a little bit later on. You will need the antenna and the cable and also the actual card itself. And it will just be a little punch out, which you can punch out and then add it in. But some of these already have, um, you know, the Wi-Fi antennas on them, but they don't have the cards in them. It just depends on whether someone's ripped it out or not. So check before you buy. Okay, so let's put this back together. And I'll quickly go through some of the things that you can actually use this for and some of the other options available to you. So let me go ahead and quickly uh, put the Wi-Fi antenna on. And again, this is Wi-Fi 5 in here. It's the AC uh, version. There is an AX version which you can actually upgrade to if you wanted to, if Wi-Fi is that essential to you. Now, if you don't have a Wi-Fi card, you can purchase these all over the web on Amazon. You can get the Intel dual band wireless AC cards here. You can see this is for times two AC. You want to make sure that you've got the single antenna here. This is the AX210 Wi-Fi 6E cards as well. The M.2 NGFF mini desktop adapter kit. So you can buy these and these will fit in there as well. Just make sure you're only using the one antenna. And again, you can see here, it is uh, compatible with the Dell Optiplex 3050, which you can check on the Dell website, which gives you all of the information about your mini PC and what you can actually add to it. So always go to their website, go to the source, and you can check for what upgrades and what uh, sort of stuff you can put into your little mini PC. And if you've got other versions, you can add Dell additional uh, DP video ports on here for 3060s, 5060s, and 7060s, and so on. There's loads of different types of stuff you can add to your little mini PC by these little add-ons here, like I was talking about earlier. Mine has them already installed, but if you're looking for something like this, check the Dell website, and you can purchase them for new, or you can use eBay for used ones. Again, the Intel i7 7700T CPU is not cheap, and there's not much of a performance difference. You can check the Dell website for any sort of manuals or informational sheets here. You can see technical specifications. They give you a full breakdown of what can actually be put into these devices. They have diagrams, images, and stuff like that. They really do go to a lot of effort to give you as much information as possible on these systems. And because they're for business use, 
you get a lot of information here. You can even buy a mount to mount them onto a back of a monitor, which is what some people might want to do. So if that was something you're looking for, you can actually mount these onto a back of a monitor to hide it away. And again, if you want to use this, you could use this for a Plex server or something like that. Uh, if that's what I'll be using this for, I'll be taking the resources off of the NAS and using it as a Plex server. You can use it as a true NAS if you wanted to install true NAS on there and start using it and then use uh, your storage elsewhere. PFSense is another one you can use on here. You can use it as a firewall slash router as well by installing PFSense, or you can use the uh, Untangle, which it used to be called, which is called uh, Astria now. You can use this as well, or you can use a Proxmox on here for your, uh, you know, labs that you want to build as well. And you've got Hyper-V Server 2016. You can have that on there. Or you've got the Citrix Hypervisor on there as well, which you can use as well. Plenty of options available. There's loads more other stuff. If you want to use it as a, you know, a retro gaming system, you can do. I've showed you uh, that there. It works perfectly fine with those with the uh, graphics on there, which is the 630 Intel graphics. If you're using a newer one, you might even get some better graphics on there. Just check the specifications before you purchase. Again, a pretty decent little mini PC or micro PC, and uh, it doesn't take up a lot of space, and it doesn't cost a lot of money. Like I said, if you want to get something affordable, then something like this is going to be right up your street. And the build quality is exceptionally good, and it's very cool and very silent. Anyway, that is going to be about it for this video for the Dell Optiplex 3050 upgrades and what you can use them for. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. Also, let me know in the comments section what you would like to see me use this for, and I'll do my best to make that video for you. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.